Hello everyone and welcome to the new video. Uh, today I would like to show you the new feature of PySolver 3.2 called sub3 distributor which is a feature to automate the creation and browsing of uh, subtrees. Uh, so first of all what are subtrees? So let's say that I load some some small save uh, where in every line we have um, exactly one bed size. So I can go, for example, to line check bed call, select some turn card, and we have one bed size here. So one of the uh, requests that come up often is that I want to take ranges from this position and create a subtree with more bed sizes. So currently the way to do it is go to the tree configuration tree building configuration, select um, create subtree configuration, which copies the ranges board and stacks from the tree. And now we can tick this checkbox, change only betting structure, uh, and select some other configuration. And now it will, now if we press build tree, we will build a tree that has more bed sizes and race sizes than uh, the original tree, but has the exact ranges from the original tree at this exit point. Uh, so now we can click build tree, we can click go, it should compute very fast because it's a, a turn tree. Okay, I did not select um, precision, so it, yeah, it computed to pretty decent precision. I can click stop go back to the browser and now we can uh, browse this tree looking at the um, uh, how would the strategies look like on the turn if we had more bed sizes and this process can be quite tedious especially if you want to um, check these subtrees with more bed sizes on different runouts you would have to go back to the tree building configuration change the turn card, and of course we have lost the context of the original tree. Uh, so that's why we came up with this new feature uh, called subtree distributor for a lack of a better name. Uh, so if we say that we want to use the subtree distributor, then when we will load a tree again, then we can see that the PyViewer is connected to itself and the subtree distributor mode. So what happens here is that now we can create, look at the settings of the solver distributor. Uh, so in this feature, we can decide if we want to rebuild subtrees on the turn or on the river. We have to select which configuration to choose for those subtrees. So we want this turn three sizes. Uh, what should be the accuracy and timeout of solving these uh, subtrees. So once we have selected all of that, we can now navigate to the turn node and we see the solver actually shows us already these three bed sizes. So what happens in the background is exactly the process that I've described a minute ago. So the new solver is created in this new solver, we set the tree building configuration of a subtree with more bed sizes. And this new solver is uh, recalculating. So if we look here in the solver log, we see that the, we can actually see the progress of resolving uh, these subtrees. And here we see uh, that after 5.7 seconds, the solver of this worker for check bet call five of diamonds has reached um, desired accuracy. And now we can browse the tree, uh, choose the most frequent bet sizes, call and just, just browse the tree normally. Um, and now if we switch to some other card, then we will see that the solver will recalculate the solution for this card and we can browse it. Uh, so that would be pretty much it if everything was nice. Uh, but there are still some limitations of this feature. And, and I think it's uh, 
probably a good idea to be aware of those limitations if you're about to use this uh, feature. So one thing is that you should be aware if you are in this mode or not. And if the solution part that you're looking at at a given moment is already um, resolved using this uh, subtree generator or not. So first of all, you will see at the bottom of the viewer uh, where it says connected to, whether you're connected to the original solver or the distributor. And so here we are connected to the, to the distributor. And the second thing is that when we look at the node ID, which may be detail that you don't normally care about, in, in, if we are using solver distributor, then we see the node ID includes the new root node information. So normally the PySolver tree st node ID starts with R0, which denotes the root node. So in here, when the solver distributor recalculates uh, from the queen of diamonds, for example, uh, the new tree, then this new tree is a root. And we can see this R0 node ID included here rather than uh, immediately the bad note. So this chunk just is there to give us a knowledge that we are actually looking at a part of the tree that has been resolved using the subtree generator. Um, the certain limitations of that is that not everything works uh, when we're browsing the subtree as compared to uh, real solver. So first of all, there is no way to actually tell the solver to resolve those subtrees to even higher accuracy. So basically once, so, so if we have a normal solution or if we ha would have computed subtree using the old way, then we could click go and stop and it would increase, like keep solving a little bit more, increase the accuracy of the tree. Whereas here there is no way to do that for subtrees. So once we have selected accuracy and timeout, once it solves the subtree once, there is no way to uh, resolve it again other than uh, changing the settings and uh, rebuilding those subtrees from, from scratch. Um, another thing about this feature is that things that don't work that well are features which do several actions across many runouts. So one thing that doesn't work is the frequency across runouts does not work in this mode. Uh, features that are severely limited are hotness and reports. So uh, hotness gets a bit tricky. I will go to it in a second and the reports will not work at all. And I will explain uh, why. Um, so when we select here a new runout, for example, Ace of Spades, what happens is that the solver uh, immediately returns to the viewer information that the tree is created, and we can immediately browse the strategy of this tree. But initially, the strategy is just uniform. It's random. The same way as the strategy if we just build a tree before solving it then the solver is solving the tree in the background, but we have to wait a little until it actually uh, reaches the required accuracy. And only then the strategy that we will browse will be correct one. So it means that if we have any tool that wants to automatically process big chunks of the tree, where it just asks for information about those trees, will not work with this uh, subtree distributor feature. So for example, if we would go to the hotness and we would select strategy, then it will not work at all. Okay, because we cannot run the following command. Uh, and if we ask for the range, yes, we can ask for the range. But if we ask for the range, what happens is that um, it will start all of the solvers and then return the results immediately. 
and this will not just will simply not work that well because you get information from the moment the tree has been created and immediately and information has been immediately retrieved rather than waiting for um, all the results to to conclude um, so if we want real information in this hotness window what we have to do is we first have to um, wait for all solvers solvers to uh, conclude and only then ask about strategy for example um, and, and for the same reasons the report will not work at all because the reports run through the tree they ask for information and they will simply get a information that's invalid um, so that's pretty much it i think so these are the things you should be aware of there's maybe one last thing i would like to point out here is that the strategy solved with a uh, subtree generator are a bit different than uh, strategies computed in a tree that originally had all those bed sizes so here i for example have prepared uh, two trees which are identical which have identical uh, structure which is board stacks ranges the only way they differ are that one tree has more bed sizes after the flop so these two trees have exactly the same flop petting structure and they differ in structure on the turn and the river um, and we computed these trees to very high accuracy both of them and if we look at the flop strategy then it's very similar when we look at most combos so when the strategies are pure they are pure in both trees and the mixing on the first lock on the first hand looks pretty much uh, pretty much the same but if we look at the total frequency we see that they are actually fairly different so in the tree with uh, only one bet size everywhere we have uh, out of position player betting here 54 percent of the time and in this other tree with many bet sizes on the turn and river it bets chooses to bet only 51% of the time. Um, I will not dare to guess why, but this is just an example to show you that the flop strategy um, depends also on the abstractions used for, uh, for later streets. So the results you will get from the tree with only one bet size everywhere and then resolving subtrees to more bed sizes will very likely be slightly different than uh, the strategy computed in the tree which had all those bed sizes to begin with um, so i think that's pretty much all i wanted to cover about this feature if you've got any more questions uh, let me know and yeah thanks for watching